Hello and welcome to Tennessee Valley this morning on WTMB. Joe Palo, joined by my lovely co-host today, Michelle Baker <laughs> of Wellington Place <laughs> yes. and Claire Bridge. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Good, thank you so much for being here. You're welcome. And I want to let everybody welcome. know why you're here today. Yeah. Michelle has been so kind as to sit in for Kim. Kim, as you can see, is not here. Kim uh, is on her way to Florida now. Her, we had some word over the weekend. Her mom had um, some health issues and she was taken to the hospital. So mm -hmm. Kim decided that I probably need to get down there and see what I can do to help. Mm -hmm. So Kim left uh, to go down there uh, at the start of the week and she'll be down there this week, but hopefully get back for the weekend. Yes. Uh, and hopefully everything's going well. So keep her and her mom in your thoughts and prayers uh, as her mom is, uh, is, is doing better. So I will tell you that those of you that know her, she is doing, doing much better. Mm -hmm. But Michelle is gonna sit in for Kim today because we've got a great show. Mm -hmm. Um, just to tell you real quick, we've got Amy Hicks with us from Helping Paws Healing Hearts, and she's got a sweetheart with her that we're mm -hmm. going to introduce to you in just a few that you'll beautiful. see. Beautiful. Uh, and, and it's a, a beautiful, well, I will tell you, it's a beautiful uh, dog, about a two-year-old dog. And so, uh, and it's very smart, very beautiful. Speaking of smart dogs, we've got Ron Moore will be, <laughs> will be here. And of course, At least Ron. You didn't say a dumb dog. <laughs> I'm thrilled you didn't right. say no. that. No, Ron is a smart dog. He is a smart dog. Uh, 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 but Ron's going to tell us about some Bradley County history, as he does each and every Wednesday. So mm -hmm. we'll, we'll talk with Ron as well. We may have another guest or two to show up. But uh, we're glad you're joining us here on this middle of the week Wednesday. Now, a couple things we want to tell you. Later on, probably this week, maybe the weekend, we're going to have for you in its entirety, a, about an hour long uh, presentation of the grand opening, the dedication that happened to our brand new Cleveland Municipal Jet Port. That is so uh, awesome. Regional, I'm saying municipal, <laughs> regional. Isn't it awesome? It is just have incredible. You seen, uh, I have not been out there yet. Wait, Michelle, wait till you see the footage we have. This place is, this is a fabulous, beautiful building. Looks like a, like a lodge, like a hunting right. lodge. It's just the way it's set up, but you'll see here in a second. Mm -hmm. But the Cleveland Regional, I said municipal, Cleveland Regional Airport, uh, Jet Port, uh, we've got footage of that. So we'll, we'll show some of that I'm here in a few to minutes. see that. And then we're going to have the program in its entirety with all the speakers. Everybody that was somebody came to this. Mm -hmm. uh, the only the only dignitary state-wise was the governor. He, didn't, he wasn't able to show up. But the lieutenant governor, we had uh, congressmen, we had uh, city officials and... It was just, it was a wonderful event. Uh -huh. It was, um, and, and you'll see it, as I said, as we get on in this week, maybe the weekend, we're going to have all that put together and edited, and it'd be about an hour-long program, so you'll get to see. And I'm glad the footage. weather held out for that, because that was on Friday, wasn't Yes, it, it? was. Okay. Now, it, now, it was rainy. It was yeah. cold and rainy. Right. Uh, and then what happened, they were going to do, which would have been neat, uh -huh. they were going to do the ribbon cutting with the chamber, they, had, they were going to have the ribbon stretched across. Uh, they had two planes set up with what's going to be the ribbon stretched across the wingspan. Right. Wing span, and then cut the ribbon there. Because of the rain and the cold, they decided to bring it all inside. Yeah, well, you get, I yeah. can't blame them because it was cold, nasty, Ooh. and miserable yeah. on Friday. It was a bone chilling cold. And, f and pouring, and, and it was yeah. pouring, and then the ice and yeah. the whole deal. But uh, but it turned out to be a, a big event. Good. Everybody showed up. Uh, it, the the winter di weather didn't hinder anybody from showing up. And uh, like I said, you'll see some of the footage here of that. And then as we have this program put in its entirety, you hear what all these folks had to say yeah. and how proud everybody is of this uh, of our new jet port. Now, the other thing we're going to talk about yes. is Michelle ah. and her family <laughs> just recently got back doing a little snow skiing. We did. We did. How'd that go? It went great. You know, and as you remember, my husband had a heart attack in October. Mm -hmm. He's doing extremely well. Wonderful. Um, came up, never thought he'd snow ski again. Came up with this wild idea. You know, I think I want to go snow skiing again. And I'm like, okay, are you sure? Is this really something we need to do? And he's like, yes, I want to try it. I want to at least try it. And I said, okay. Well, he did fabulous. Fabulous. Did he really? 
Yeah, he outskied me. <laughs> he really did. The man with the heart attack. Yeah. It showed me how out of shape I really mm. am. So. Now, well, is he getting in back, back into better shape because yeah. of this now? Of course, yeah. that was in October, so he's had some months. So he had a little he's, bit of work on you. Yeah, he's had a few months to work on it. So, and he's dropped more weight, which really? is really surprising. He looked good me. when we saw him the other day. Yeah, we saw him at, at, at Outback. Okay, he did cheat and he ate a steak that night. No, but it was that's off the fine. Low but that's okay. Yeah. Um, you know, he's. he's He's lost weight. I've told him we're going to have to go shopping because all his clothes are baggy. You know, you remember the song Can't Touch This mm -hmm. with the parachute pants? He can take his pants and hold them out like that and <laughs> scoot across the kitchen floor. You know, the, the, you know, trying to do the dance. But he, um, he, t he really just took his time on the slopes. He won't That's do a good. black. You know, he, we only went to some of the right. tougher blues, but... He uh, he did really no well. No kidding. Yeah, that's wonderful. The last time last time down the slopes, I thought after my third fall, I thought I'm done. <laughs> you didn't did break anything. Do, I didn't break anything. Because I know it, most people when they go skiing, if there's a group, somebody in that group somehow somewhere something will break. It will break, or you will hurt, or you will strain, or you will whatever. Yeah, that last one day, that last time down the blue, I looked at, at Rob and I was like, "You go ahead and go again. I'm done. <laughs> I'm, I'll be in the now, lodge." Now this, and I have never really been snow skiing. Oh, it's a ball. I would love to go, but this is my my thing too. Now when you're going down, of course, I know it's cold. You're you're literally on the snow, on the ice, mm -hmm. on the slope. But when you're all bundled up, do you really feel that cold? No. Because your adrenaline's going. Yeah. Well, and not only that, you got to wear the right clothes. Right. You know, right, you got to right, wear, right, right. you know, we do the ski pants and the jackets and right, the gloves right. and all that. But it really, that day, it wasn't that cold. Really? It got up into the upper 40s. Really? Yeah. See, because I'd like to go, because I've, I've seen on TV, I don't know if they're at every ski slope, but I see these, like, ladies in bikinis on snow skis. <laughs> Like snow bunnies. No, we didn't see any of those at Catalina. Okay. No, we did not see right. that. All right. Because I know yeah. Rob would have probably stopped. Maybe had to take a couple of pictures. He probably would have, knowing Rob. <laughs> yeah. So, but so yeah, and I've always thought I'd like to see that. I mean, yeah. just because it's it's odd. You don't see somebody in a bikini snow skiing every day, and just for that reason alone, I mean, purely for the uh, you know for the educational value. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> But so yeah, I, I've never been, but I, I hear it is a lot of fun. I've it had a lot of friends. It is a load of fun. It, you know, my Rob and I went with another couple, so it was just all adults. Of course, my kids are pretty much adults. Right. You know, but so, but your mom and your brother didn't go. No, mom and Chuck okay. didn't go. It's okay. just the you know the two couples, and we just hung out and and went skiing, skied all day, and drove That's home. Great. And Catalucci's, it's only about two and a half hours away. Oh really? So it's not that far. You know, it's not a huge, you know, it's not a huge slope or anything, but it's, it's fun. It's right. really pretty family oriented. So we just went and hung out and had a good time. Well, now, do you guys have your own ski stuff? Rob does. Okay. Rob has well, his own. Well, that's why he did so good. Yeah, I know. Got own, when you got your own stuff, you're pretty good. He's on boots and skis oh. and yeah. Actually, a, a friend of ours bought it for him. You know, Rob's big thing is Jeeps. And so Rob ends up working on all of our friends' vehicles. And so they bought him some ski boots for, you know, helping out with the jeeps. That's and, nice. You know, he's like, guys, you don't have to do this. Because those aren't, uh, those they're aren't not they're inexpensive. kind of expensive. Yeah. They're not inexpensive. We, we've been going up to Alpine, the Alpine Ski Center yeah. in Knoxville. And they apparently have this huge sale on Labor Day weekend. So... Yeah, he has informed me I'm going to get new ski stuff on my Oh. Weekend, so I'm going to hold him to that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're going to have to go a little more, too. I know. you got to utilize it. Well, we hadn't been in, it had been about two and a half years, two and a half, three years. Because if you'll remember, a year before Rob had his heart attack, he had back surgery. Oh, that's right. <laughs> so. He's just falling apart, Michelle. I'm going to trade him in. No kidding. I mean, that's what <laughs> I'm trade saying. trade you in, Rob. I love you, but man, that's really. That's what I'm saying. I mean, high maintenance, <laughs> Rob. My goodness. Oh, so yeah, so when he really, you know, after the back surgery and the heart attack, I was like, okay. But the wonderful thing is, back surgery, heart attack, yet he's out there now and skiing and feeling probably better than he has in years. He is. And, he is. And, so his, that's great. Yeah, his cholesterol, he took his cholesterol again. It's like he's 20 years old with his See, lab work. And, it's and, incredible. And that's, you don't want to have to go to the doctor for anything, mm -hmm. but... But in a situation, my dad had some, some heart problems and had to go to the doctor, had to do tests and all that. So when it was done, he, they found a couple little things. But, yeah. but like in Rob's case too, and I said to him, I said, but dad, look at this. Think about this. The wonderful thing is, whether you wanted to or not, you, you had to go. They did yeah. all this work on you 
And this is what they found out. I mean, you know you, you, you're good to go now. Yeah. Instead of wondering, I wonder, I got a pain in Because they did every, they found out. So in you're his case, good. too. Yeah, you're good to go. I mean, in his cholesterol, when he had his heart attack, was not bad. Right. It was only 210. Anything over 200 is high. Okay. But his good cholesterol was great. It's now like 167. I don't even want to know what mine is. <laughs> or, I need to know, but I don't want to know what right. mine is. No so. kidding. Yeah. So he's got to feel great. Oh yeah, he does. He does. Man. And it's it's amazing how it's how it's changed kind of all the outlook of all of our kids and, and everything. You know, it's like okay, take life by the horns and go with it. Absolutely. Um, you know, my son turned twenty one. We saw yes. that out back. Yes. Over, that's why we were there. Yes. He turned twenty one last Monday. Uh, two days later, he flew to L. A. With <laughs> some of his buddies. And Be careful. They went to a music festival. Did they really? Yeah, had a oh, I ball. Bet. I had bet. a ball. You know, and and it's it's amazing. I'm glad to see him do that because I'm thinking you are making memories yeah. that you will always have. Absolutely. And so I'm glad to see him taking life by that's the That's absolutely right. Absolutely, and that's wonderful. And it's great that you kind of. Um, what do I want to say? Relinquish the, the, the reins a little bit to let that happen. And even though he is 21. He's 21. But I'll tell you, I, I've always had this philosophy grow, you know, raising my children. My goal was not to make them dependent on me. My goal was to make them independent mm -hmm. people in society. I, I didn't want them to have to depend right, on me. Right. So, yeah, I was probably a little more lenient, a little more, yeah, you need to go. You need to do this. You need, you know. Right. I, I was always like that. I was not a very hovering mother. See, and, and not that Kim was or that I was, uh -huh. uh, but I don't think, uh, well, I, Corey may have, but I don't think Matthew got that memo. Oh, he did? No, and Matthew <laughs> didn't get that memo. Uh, it was sent out to everybody. And when you they turn, didn't get it? But no, nah, he's, he's, you know, he's still, uh, our house is Walmart. Oh, yes. You know. Oh, yes. Well, you know, my daughter moved out and then moved back home. And and I told one of my cousins in where I'm from in Kentucky the other day, he said, uh, well, I bet you're glad Emily's moved back home. And I'm like, well, I am because my coat and my shoe collection doubled there you <laughs> when go. she moved home. So I'm thrilled. But I, I'm going to have to sell my house. And he said, why? And I said, well, apparently it's big enough for that when they leave, they just keep coming back. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And and I love them. Don't get me wrong. I adore them. But they need to go. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's time to go. <laughs> well, I have, I have a friend that told me he has uh, what he calls the 1830 plan. Okay. And uh, he said how that works is when they turn 18, they've got 30 days to move out. Uh, there you go. So <laughs> I right. thought... That's another memo. There's another thing I like we. That. I'm gonna. I'm gonna have to come up with some memos of my own. Yeah. Just, I, well, I told him we have the. Uh, we've got the 30 30 plan. When you turn 30, <laughs> you got 30 years to move out. 30 years to move out. So that's how that works. Yeah, but anyway. I'm just so cool. Mine don't want to leave home. Yeah, and that is true. And that is true too. And, and and you know what's a weird thing in in a in a weird way. You almost don't want them to. You do, but you don't. I do, but I don't. Right. You know, and my daughter, we're so close. You know, that's good. And even my son, when my daughter was 16, he came to me and said, "Mom, how did you do it?" Mothers and daughters don't get along mm -hmm. at this age, mm -hmm. and and we always have. We never really had those issues, and we're just big buddies now. That's that wonderful. she's old enough and. We That's just hang terrific. out together, so. That is good. And and, and, and as much as you said your uh, coat and shoe doubled, so did hers. Oh, it did. You now know. we go shopping and we go, hey, Emily. I go, Emily, you could wear these with that outfit. And she could go, and you could wear those with that outfit. <laughs> We're good. Makes it fun. Makes it for fun. It does. It does. So she can't ever live too far away. Yeah, yeah. see? All right. Well, we've got, like I said, we've got a great show, mm -hmm. but we do want to show some footage of that that we talked about oh, yeah. of the new Cleveland re uh, regional jet port. And if, James, if you can roll some of that, let's look at that. We've just got about a couple, three minutes to show you guys. What you're going to see, obviously, is the runways and uh, that's the, uh, the, the, the tower. Now, this was on Friday when it was blistery, cold and rainy, but that's the front wow, of the new uh, uh, airport terminal. And it, it is unbelievable it as i said it looks like a lodge uh, as you go in it's got uh high def tvs all through it it's got a fireplace strategically placed uh in the middle where you can enjoy the fireplace from either side uh as you can see here it's got an upstairs like a loft up there there's meeting rooms there's nancy cation showing everybody there i am <laughs> and so there you there. are <laughs> there's meeting rooms there's there's all kinds of just uh, uh, uh I can't even begin to tell you all the different areas of this uh, uh, 
uh, terminal. But as you can see, the planes there, the jets that were there, and then of course, uh, you'll see the the very first. We have the very first flight uh, that came in to. Uh, you'll see here in a minute that came in to the uh, the jet port on on uh, Thursday afternoon at three o'clock. The very first when they when the FAA officially opened up the jet port. The first flight that came in, Alan Jones, Jones Management, checking the cash, Jones Aviation. He was the first official plane to fly in, and you'll see footage of that here in just a few. But this is the runways. Uh, yeah. And one unique thing about, I was talking to, uh, to Alan about that, and I said, okay, tell me the difference. You, you were the first one to land, and here it is, the arrivals. This is the brand new arrival. Uh -huh. You were the first one to land. What is the difference of landing at this airport and then at our old airport. Right. And he said, when you came in at the old airport, as soon as you touched down, you saw the end of the runway and you immediately had to slam on the brakes oh, to wow. make sure you, he said, this jet port, as we landed, we hovered and landed slowly on the runway, still couldn't see the edge of the runway and slowly applied the brakes and the plane just stopped like you would at any other airport. Wow. So. Uh, I, I think you'll see it coming in here, but that in itself uh, makes it uh, wonderful because if you've ever taken off from the old airport, mm -hmm. you know that that is a worry coming in, taking off, uh, landing the short runways. But here, it's fabulous. You can see the plane coming in Look here. At that. The first official plane to arrive, and it was at 3 p.m. on Thursday afternoon, the uh, the 24th. That is awesome. And, uh, and just think about the economic effect oh, it's going to have on this area. That is what, that's part of the Absolutely, absolutely. And th that was even talked about, that a lot of industry um, would come to our area. And that was uh, virtually, uh, to a lot of them, it was a turnoff. Not having an airport when they were thinking about coming in, flying in, their corporate jets coming in, people wow. having to bring in. Uh, knowing that they would have to fly into Chattanooga, then drive uh, to Cleveland. So that in that way, and there was a lot of industry that never gave us the reason why they weren't coming. They never said it's because your airport wasn't, you know, conducive to what we need to do. Right. We just, we just kind of lost it and you just didn't ever hear from them again. Right. With this being in place, absolutely. Industry, uh, the new economic growth is going to be Explode. You know, it just makes me sit here and wonder what is Cleveland going to look like in 10, 15, 20 years now. It's and, already grown so much. Yeah, and, and, and this particular, uh, the, the new jet port has been kind of in the drawing board in the works for, it seems like, 30 years. Mm -hmm. um, Nancy Kaysen, we have to give a lot of credit to Nancy and, and all the folks that worked with her. When she was president of the chamber, she made it a point to... Uh, really work on that and bringing that here now right. of course it, we we just got it so right. it, it, all the work has paid off all the hard work but all the people that went into bringing this thing uh, uh to fruition getting it set getting the the, the property uh, right brothers construction and what they did mm -hmm. uh it's just all it, it was just a great event to be there it's wonderful to have it and we're very excited mm -hmm. and proud to have this in our community okay we're going to take a break we're going to be back. We've got Amy Hicks in the house. And as I said, Ron Moore on the way as well. Stay tuned back with more Tennessee Valley this morning after this. Stay tuned. Logan Thompson, attorneys at law, have built a firm offering quality legal services to the people and businesses of Southeast Tennessee. We have achieved expertise in all areas of law in order to represent our clients in a manner they need, deserve, and have come to expect. Logan Thompson, with nine attorneys and an extensive and competent support staff, is available to provide representation in various legal areas, including family law, social security benefits, personal injury, criminal defense, workman's compensation, as well as business and complex litigation matters. At Logan Thompson, we have been building a tradition of legal services for over 40 years. We have developed the finest legal services and are proficient in providing you with representation you can trust. Give us a call at 423-476-2251 to schedule your free consultation. Kyle Motors, 802 20th Street Southeast in Cleveland is the place to find quality pre-owned cars and trucks. Kyle offers on-the-spot financing on all vehicles on the lot. Each pre-owned vehicle goes through a complete inspection to make sure each car and truck meets the Kyle Motors standard. 
warranty, and extended warranties available on all vehicles. Kyle Motors will sell you a car or truck that you will be proud to drive for many years to come. See Tony, Bill, Dale, James, or David and let them put you in your next quality pre-owned vehicle. Kyle Motors, 802 20th Street Southeast, phone 790-7100. At Crawford Pharmacy, we offer custom compounding. Our pharmacists are known for their attention to detail and unique expertise. So visit us at 2260 Chambliss Avenue, Cleveland, Tennessee. For personal assistance, walk right in or come up to our convenient drive through Crawford Pharmacy, serving our community one person at a time. Americana, where trucks are big and bold, and a handshake is firm, and your word is gold. Don Lefford Chevy Buick GMC in Athens is a $2,000 drive. Maybe you're coming from here or here. Doesn't matter. Buying a truck from Don Lefford in Athens will save you at least $2,000. Don Lefford Chevy Buick GMC in Athens, a $2,000 drive worth making. I'll take that drive every time. Featuring some of the South's most scenic views, the Mountain View Inn has been a landmark in the Cleveland community for over 40 years. Our executive guest quarters with flat screen TVs and excellent bedding will make any guest comfortable. Carrie's Restaurant is one of Cleveland's favorite with one of the best buffets around. Hello and on behalf of the Hughes family, thank you for so many years of your business and your friendship. This segment of Tennessee Valley This Morning is brought to you by Crown Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram, located at 511 South Lee Highway in Cleveland and 2120 Chapman Road, Chattanooga. For your next new or previously owned vehicle, make it Crown Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram, the better way to buy. <laughs> Welcome back to Tennessee Valley. <laughs> Tennessee Valley this morning. Joe Palo along with Michelle Baker, my co-host today. And we are now joined by Amy Hicks of Helping Paws Healing Hearts. Mm -hmm. And Amy has Addie with her. You probably can see her here sitting. Oh. Uh, she's kind of blended in with the chairs in our pants. <laughs> in the pants, yeah. <laughs> but Addie is here. And Addie is a therapy dog, two years old, uh, brand new, uh, I guess, to being a therapy dog dog in comparison to what Daryl and, and, and Larry have been doing as long as they've been doing it. But Amy's going to talk to us a little bit about a couple of programs uh, that, that are going on. The first, uh, Amy, if we can, as, as Addie stretches out. Uh, it's very comfortable. No kidding. <laughs> I mean, she, she knows no stress. And you have told us that she is probably virtually one of the smartest dogs you've ever had. She really is. And she started, she passed her therapy dog test last April, as I was sharing with you guys off air. I had a baby in May, and my goal was to get her. Yes, congratulations, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. Um, my goal was to get her certified prior to the baby. So she's been working since last April, and she's done amazing. And Addie is a rescue dog, as my other two are. Okay. Um, I'm, but she's so smart and so intuitive. And. The thing about Addie that's amazing, um, when she's home, she is full speed, never stops. I have to bring this dog in by 11 o'clock at night and lock her in because she guards constantly or she's constantly mm -hmm. watching or sniffing. She never stops. Um, but when she has this leash on and a bandana and she's in a school with kids, mm -hmm. completely different dog. She knows her play. She's calm. It's just, it's amazing. And of course, she misses nothing. So, whatever's right. going on in the room right now. She is very observant. I mean, she is observant. No kidding. And she's wagging her tail hard to see James. James, she likes you a lot, James. <laughs> um, but Addie is part of a program, and let's talk about this, uh, Amy. Uh, Habit, it's an animal assisted therapy program. Uh, tell us about the, the habit. And, well, this, first of all, is a very brand new adventure. Okay. Um, this is just kind of a long time coming. I have really wanted more people in the Cleveland community, as I've shared with you guys on air several times, to do pet therapy. I didn't want to be the sole person doing it. Um, so very, very fortunately, the University of Tennessee at Knoxville, their um, school there, veterinary school, has this program, Habit. 
and they contacted us, Helping Balls Healing Beautiful. Hearts. They found us on the internet and um, we have met and they want to start a group here in Cleveland of people like me um, who want to volunteer with their dogs, either um, in a school, in a nursing home, um, and basically just help people mm -hmm. and volunteer with your dog. Right. So we're having an organizational meeting February the 12th from 5 until 7.30 at the Cleveland Public Library. And we want to invite everyone to please, please come. I run into people all over the community all the time who say, oh, I would love to volunteer with my dog. I would love to volunteer with my dog. So guys, here is your chance. I have been advocating for this for years for this community because mm -hmm. I, I'll be honest, I'm one person with three dogs. Mm -hmm. And as I shared with you earlier, I'd taken Larry and Daryl to Wellington Place in Clearbridge for seven years. And, you know, then some other folks started coming, mm -hmm. but still there's not that many of us in the community who volunteer. And we constantly get calls, Amy, mm -hmm. can you come here? And you just can only go so many places. Right. So. This is very exciting for me personally. I'm very passionate about people helping with their animals. Come here, Addie. Um, and, and, and you don't have to, um, your dog does need to be a very good temperament. Um, mm -hmm. For this meeting, um, as I said, it's just an informational meeting, right. February the 12th. So please um, contact me after this. We'll hopefully get my website out and there. And don't bring your pet. And don't bring your pet to that meeting, no, because they want to tell you what it's about, right. what's expected. They will temperament test your pet, meaning um, they're going to make sure that your pet is very calm um, and could be around people and is not going mm -hmm. to bite right. them mm -hmm. and jump in their lap. You know, as, as much as I love Addie and as cute as she is, um, for her to go into a nursing home and to sit in someone's lap, that's not a good thing. She's a good sized dog and could scratch someone, make them bleed. Right, so right, lots right. of things like that that they will go over that someone might not think about. Mm -hmm. But um, like I said, I've had so many people over the years say, oh, I would love to do what you're doing with my dog. So community, this is the time. Please come out for this opportunity. Um, it's free. There's no charge. And when you, um, if you sign up to, to be a volunteer with Habit, um, they will provide you liability insurance, okay. which is a very yeah. important thing for people. Absolutely. Because even though I have all the faith in the world, yes, I do, Miss <laughs> Addie, in you, when I take Addie to Wellington Place or Clarebridge, I am responsible if she scratches someone or hurts someone, or when mm -hmm. I take her into a school, if she accidentally you know, knock someone over, you know, that's on me. Right. So they will be providing you with liability insurance. So now, a another good thing here, because folks may say, you know what, I don't know. I I'm interested, but I don't know if I'll have the time, if I'll be able to, if I really want to, I'm just interested. But it says here, attendance does not imply any obligation. So okay. if you show up, it's still up to you. It doesn't mean just because you show up that it's a done deal you're doing this. Exactly. And that's why I'm saying please take the opportunity to attend this meeting. I will be there. I've done this for, um, goodness, my dogs are, are 10 now. Um, nine years I've been doing this in the community so I will be there to share experiences and then Habit the folks from Knoxville will be there and they will explain um, just answer all your questions but no it does not mean you're not obligated to do anything and if you do sign on guys I always say this to people, volunteer means volunteer. Mm -hmm. You're not obligated to, you know, if you sign up to go one hour a week, then that's what you want to do. Or if you say, I want to go one hour a month, that's what you want to do. Mm -hmm. You're a volunteer, you're not an employee. Right. Well, and I have to say, just personally, you know, what a difference our, the therapy dogs make, mm -hmm. you know, in our communities. Um, you know, I mean, I have residents with, with very severe Alzheimer's and dementia, and the moment they see a dog, mm -hmm. their faces just light up. It's just, it, it's, it's so good. So anybody who will do it, it is very, it's greatly appreciated. Mm -hmm. Greatly appreciated. And, 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 and needed, you and know. And very needed. Very yes. needed. Um, yes. You've got, it, but I'll let you go ahead and, and tell us, Amy, but how, if somebody's interested that would like to participate, maybe come to the meeting, phone number I see here, what do they need to do? Um, well, mostly um, you can go to my website. It's helpingpawshealinghearts.com. Um, 
also this is going to be in the newspaper over the next couple of weeks this show we're just trying to get the word out right. um, this flyer has been sent all over the community okay um, but the meeting is February the 12th from 5 to 7 30 at the um, Cleveland Public Library I believe in the Craig Miles room upstairs on the second floor right so okay. just show up show up if you get there in five minutes and say hey this isn't for me then feel free to leave but um, we hope we wouldn't do that but it's just a great opportunity. Well, and, and a phone number here, and of course, this is this is the lady from, I guess, the East Tennessee uh, Habit Program, the Habit mm -hmm. Program Coordinator in Knoxville, I'm assuming. It actually is, because they are actually, I, I am um, partnering with them um, since I've been doing it here in this community. I'm gonna kind of be their advocate here in Bradley County, but um, th she will be a contact from <coughs> the University of Tennessee at Knoxville. Okay. And I will get her information on my website as well, and Beautiful. you guys can contact her or contact me um, but the main thing is show up for the meeting. You're not going to know about it if you don't don't attend the meeting. Absolutely. And it may be something that just is geared right for you, which you would like to do, and something maybe you've been wanting to do for a while. Now is your opportunity. Um, another program that Amy uh, has, and this is the one we've been talking about she's been doing here for the past nine years or so, Helping Paws and Healing Hearts. Um, Tell us what that is for folks that are watching for the first time don't have any idea. Well, our program itself um, grew out of my work as a school counselor with Cleveland City Schools um, for the past 17 years. And as a school counselor, my dogs began to go to work with me. We just had children who had tons of problems, emotional problems, <coughs> stresses and strains. And um, I researched pet therapy and went to the Cleveland City School Board. They were um, great supporters, allowed it. My dogs went to work with me uh, initially on Fridays, then every day. Grew from there, fast forward, developed a nonprofit, <coughs> and my three dogs work in every school in Bradley County and Cleveland wow. City and many after school programs helping kids <coughs> in a variety of ways. Um, we work with kids um, who have emotional needs. We work with kids who may just be stressed out over not knowing how to read, or right. they might not want to go to class. Um, <laughs> another part of our, I hope you're not allergic okay? to add <laughs> on. Can we get some water? <laughs> Guys, Ron, would you mind getting Michelle a little bit of water? Another part <clears throat> of our, a huge part of our program that has grown from Helping Paws is our um, Helping Paws Healing Hearts Grief Camp. Unfortunately, um, children, in our community experience a lot of grief from death. And one year in particular, oh, thank you, Addie. <laughs> <laughs> one year in Ron's particular. Ron's got it cupped in his hand. I think there's a mug <laughs> over there somewhere. I don't know what happened to me. Addie was going to help you out. I hope you're not allergic to <clears throat> Addie. One year in particular, we had seven kids um, <clears throat> just in one school who had all had a parent who had passed away. So I just thought, you know what, we need to come together and do a camp for these kids. Mm -hmm. So we put together, I'm helping Paul's Healing Hearts Grief Weekend, mm -hmm. and this is our fifth year to do it. Okay. We do two a year. Um, we have one in the fall, one in the spring, and our spring camp is coming up. It's March 15th and 16th. Mm -hmm. And this time, I'm so lucky to have people in the community, being a very, very small nonprofit, um, people <laughs> enable me to use their facilities. Um, so um, this camp will be at Arnold Elementary School. Um, it's Friday night from four until eight, and Saturday from eight until one. It's for children ages six to 12 mm -hmm. who have had a death in their family mm -hmm. recently. And we will have pet therapy, play therapy, art therapy. And this year, I'm excited, we've added Kids on the Block. They oh, have beautiful. A, they yeah. have a phenomenal program on grief. Um, mm -hmm. It's actually a story um, of a little girl who dies of cancer. Oh, um, wow. So the puppets portray the story, but it all relates to kids and how kids deal with grief because kids deal so differently than we do. Yes. Right. Um, and of course, Larry, Daryl, and Addie are there. They're a part of the weekend. That is, is a big draw that makes the kids excited. But um, it's just a great camp. And when I say, oh, when I say that, people say it's a grief camp. How can it be a great camp? Well, folks, it is. It's amazing to see little children come together and they come in broken and they leave in a way uplifted and the main reason is they walk away knowing that they are not the only child <coughs> who has experienced that right. because when they're in their classroom they may be the only child who has had a death 
But when they come together for this weekend, there are 25 kids there and they all share that same exact feeling and they can bond with each other. Mm -hmm. So um, it's just amazing and everything is geared around grief and death and all of the activities promote um, just helping the children to heal. And we get such phenomenal reviews from parents. Um, and once again, it's nothing that I do, it's just how the camp comes together and then the volunteers and the play therapy and the pet therapy and the art, art therapy that allows the children to, to grieve and heal as they need to. And, and it says here as well that uh, included uh, with the two day uh, uh, weekend is meals, snacks, t-shirts, and it says plenty of therapeutic activities and healing time. And it's all free. Absolutely. Um, it's all free and you know I'm very fortunate in this community people donate and of course I have to get a plug in for that. Um, I feel we are a very good nonprofit if anyone ever wants to make a donation um, but I primarily go on fundraisers and donations and I'm always able to just kind of keep afloat. I don't take a salary at all. Mm -hmm. um, I just use the money for the programming. It goes right back in to run the camps and the programming to help me when I go to the schools to help the right. children. Well, now, Amy, if somebody watching, if they're interested, if they're, they want to get their, their children involved, or if there's a child watching that would like to be involved, what would they need to do? Every school counselor in this community, and I say that knowing because I have sent it to them, um, has this information. Um, the United Way has this information. Most all agencies in our community have this information. Once again, my website, Helping Paul's Healing Hearts, you can get this information. Um, but once again, Parents, go to your school counselors tomorrow and say, I would like some information on, on grief camp. And most all of them will know that because, of course, I am a former school counselor. I still have a very good working relationship with all of them, and we're all in very close contact. As a matter of fact, several of the local school counselors volunteer for the camp as well. Oh, and, awesome. and it says now registration deadline is February 28th. It is. It is. And that's mm -hmm. why I appreciate you guys letting me come on sure. early. Um, the registration, of course, is February 28th because um, we have to prepare, we have sure. to get t-shirts ordered, we have to order food, and um, we just need some time to get ready for the camp. And we do only take 25 kids, and um, it closes out every year at 25. We only take 25 because we want it to be very small because um, our topic is, is a tough one. We don't right. want a huge, large group. Yeah, no. So that's why we do only take 25 kids. Um, and I had some kids in the fall want to, you know, be there, but they got there too late. So, you know, hopefully they'll get their registration in this time. Now, would they pick this registration form up at school? Yes, the school counselors have them. So the you would pick this up, fill it out, them. and then just take it back to school or mail it in? Mail uh, it. You can do a number of things. You can give the information back to your school counselors. You can give it, um, you can fax it, you can mail it. Um, once again, all the information is on my website. But like I said, most school counselors have the form. They have everything. They have my mailing address. Um, I work very, very closely with them. They're, they're great to get the information. Yeah. They're the ones in the schools with the kids, and they mm -hmm. know the situations. Mm -hmm. So they're the ones making the referrals. Right, absolutely. Well, Amy, first of all, we appreciate everything you do, mm -hmm. and we appreciate you being on the show and letting us know about mm -hmm. Addie and all the wonderful things that are going on. Uh, but again, if somebody would like to get involved with the Helping uh, Pause Healing Hearts, or if they'd like to go f with the weekend, or if they would like to get involved with Habit. Yes. They just need to get in touch with you and you can direct them. Yes, please go to our website. And once again, two totally separate events. Yes. The, the Grief Camp is an event for kids that we've already got established and it's going. The Habit is a brand new program for our community. It's for those of you out there over the past five years who have stopped me and said, Amy, hey, I want to volunteer with my dog, help me. So here you go, folks, it's here, Habit. Um, it's a brand new program through the University of Tennessee at Knoxville, partnering with Helping Paul's Healing Hearts. I'm very excited, very passionate about pet therapy, and I hope it. I hope we have a huge turnout. Oh, I'm sure you will. I'm sure you will. And I apologize for getting a tickle in my throat. It's okay. <laughs> it's all right. Don't worry about that. Don't worry you know about what? And it didn't. It didn't even phase Addie. No, no it didn't. She, she wanted to help you. Yes, no, she hey, was, I could have used some back help. Like, like, what's looking wrong back. with her? <laughs> But again, Amy, thank you so much for being with us. We do appreciate it. Thank you, guys. All right, folks. We're going to take a break. We're going to get Michelle some water. We're going <laughs> to come back. We've got Ron Moore in the house when we return after these messages. Stay tuned. Town Americana, where trucks are big and bold, and a handshake is firm, and your word is gold. 
Don Lefford Chevy Buick GMC in Athens is a $2,000 drive. Maybe you're coming from here or here. Doesn't matter. Buying a truck from Don Lefford in Athens will save you at least $2,000. Don Lefford Chevy Buick GMC in Athens, a $2,000 drive worth making. I'll take that drive every time. At Crawford Pharmacy, we offer custom compounding. Our pharmacists are known for their attention to detail and unique expertise. So visit us at 2260 Chambliss Avenue, Cleveland, Tennessee. For personal assistance, walk right in or come up to our convenient drive through Crawford Pharmacy, serving our community one person at a time. Kyle Motors, 802 20th Street Southeast in Cleveland is the place to find quality pre-owned cars and trucks. Kyle offers on-the-spot financing on all vehicles on the lot. Each pre-owned vehicle goes through a complete inspection to make sure each car and truck meets the Kyle Motors standard. Warranty and extended warranties available on all vehicles. Kyle Motors will sell you a car or truck that you will be proud to drive for many years to come. See Tony, Bill, Dale, James, or David and let them put you in your next quality pre-owned vehicle. Kyle Motors, 802 20th Street Southeast, phone 790-7100. Logan Thompson, Attorneys at Law, have built a firm offering quality legal services to the people and businesses of Southeast Tennessee. We have achieved expertise in all areas of law in order to represent our clients in a manner they need, deserve, and have come to expect. Logan Thompson, with nine attorneys and an extensive and competent support staff, is available to provide representation in various legal areas, including family law, social security benefits, personal injury, criminal defense, workman's compensation, as well as business and complex litigation matters. At Logan Thompson, we have been building a tradition of legal services for over 40 years. We have developed the finest legal services and are proficient in providing you with representation you can trust. Give us a call at 423-476-2251 to schedule your free consultation. Featuring some of the South's most scenic views, the Mountain View Inn has been a landmark in the Cleveland community for over 40 years. Our executive guest quarters with flat screen TVs and excellent bedding will make any guest comfortable. Carrie's Restaurant is one of Cleveland's favorite with one of the best buffets around. Hello and on behalf of the Hughes family, thank you for so many years of your business and your friendship. This segment of Tennessee Valley This Morning is brought to you by Crown Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram, located at 511 South Lee Highway in Cleveland and 2120 Chapman Road, Chattanooga. For your next new or previously owned vehicle, make it Crown Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram, the better way to buy. Welcome back to Tennessee Valley This Morning. Joe Palo, my guest host, Michelle Baker, who uh, we, we put the uh, defibrillator on her. <laughs> I <laughs> made it. I made it through. She's back. <laughs> she came back. Back to life. Uh, but yeah, so, and we are joined by Ron Moore. Good morning. Who, good morning, who has got a wonderful topic. In fact, we didn't know it till he just sat down, but today he's going to be all about dogs because we had Amy Hicks. You're going to the dogs. And yeah. <laughs> we are. And so Ron's topic is a little bit has some uh, is about dogs well, we're, too. We're talking about coon hunting today. Uh, there you go. Love it. That's no G on the end of that. No. It's coon hunting. Right. Mm -hmm. so it's not hunting, isn't that? Uh, you know that's a, it's American tradition, uh, and it's done all over the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Wisconsin, and Ohio, and Pennsylvania has a lot of coons. They're in Florida. Uh, Florida raccoons tend to be a little bit more whiter color, and the ones around here in the mountains tend to be that color that you'd think most raccoons to be. Right. And of course there's a huge uh, need for the pelts. Pelts are used to, to make coats and uh, they make blankets and they make coonskin caps. Although most coonskin caps that you will see is the front part of it's actually rabbit fur and the tail is the only thing that's really part uh, of the raccoon. Uh -huh. So a real raccoon hat. I understand if you get your own pelt you can ship it off to this company 
and for fifty five dollars they'll make you a real raccoon hat with a head on it and all. Really? Real. So fifty five dollars if you'd like to have a raccoon hat. Yeah, Joe, you would look good in that. Well, you see, I'm just sitting. Here, I'm sitting here thinking like size of the head, the size of the coon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So most raccoons would, would fit snugly right on your head. <laughs> you just cut the bottom out or the, you know, the legs and, the, and you just put that right on your head. Oh, they, uh, now, a raccoon average... I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of cleaning <laughs> involved. I would uh, hope so. A, a small adult will run anywhere from 5 pounds up to about 20 pounds. But oh, it doesn't wow. mean that they don't get bigger. A big one, uh, talking to coon hunters, are about 35, 36 pounds is a big raccoon. Really? And yeah, they have be. seen some of those. Now, with the urban sprawl, uh, raccoons are now getting into your houses and yes. around into your garbage, into mm -hmm. the cat food and all mm -hmm. that. And they probably get fed a little bit better, although you're not purposely feeding them. Mm -hmm. uh, the, they will get in there and they will grow a little longer, you know. And so uh, some people use them as pets. But remember, they are a wild animal and they eventually will bite the devil mm -hmm. out of you. Now, and as a raccoon, is a raccoon considered a, uh, a, uh, um, uh, a rodent? No, it's not. I've got the, uh, the, the scientific name of it, okay. but it's not a rodent. Okay. It would be more in a, I guess, in the, uh, well, above the squirrel and things of that nature. But yeah, you know, I don't, I don't really remember what it was. Because they use their hands, I know. Yeah. And they, yeah. you know. Now, they do not wash their food. <laughs> oh. That's not a, that is a myth. They oh, do see. put their food into the water because they have no saliva scent glands. Oh, I didn't so know. they have them to moisten their food. And they also like to get all the dirt off of it. Sort of like, yeah. you know, when you drop toast on there, you go, blow it off. Yeah. So, sort yeah. of the same thing with Kiss a raccoon. Kiss up to God yeah. and it's good. Yeah, right. So, yeah. Uh, so, but they do douse their foods. And, uh, uh, but the biggest part about coon hunting is, well, first off, uh, finding a place now. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, as we have the suburban sprawl and there's mm -hmm. national forests and different areas, it gets harder and harder because when you let your dogs out to go hunt, hunt the coons, they don't necessarily stay on the piece of property that you have agreed to hunt. They, they will go till they find the raccoon and they will run for hours and hours. Right. And the biggest part of the raccoon hunting is you following the dogs. Mm -hmm. So if you want to get in shape, forget aerobicides. Go get coon you, Get you one of them little lights on your hat and follow your dogs out into the woods. Now these guys have GPS's on these dogs and everything. Cause they will not come out of the woods if their dog comes back because dogs cost a few dollars there. And well, see, uh, well, that's the question I'm going to ask. So, so it has to be done at night. It's not done. No, no. It. Well, it's a better time to do it at night. Okay. But uh, some coons are out during the day, but you'll see more at night. Okay. Yeah. I, ha I have to tell you, you are bringing yeah. back so many memories. You for said me. something about your grandfather. My, my grandfather was a fox hunter okay. in southeast. Con now, granted, he never came home with a fox. No. Okay, never well, did. Well, if he never your took the dogs, my, gran well, your well, my grandmother was a beautiful. Okay. Woman. Well, but, you know, fox. if he never took the dogs with him too, there's some question. No, he did take the dogs. <laughs> okay. That's true. That's the, I, can, I can understand that. But yes, he did take the dogs, and he would have ten to fifteen dogs. Uh -huh. You know, and all these dog houses lined up, and and the kids, the grandchildren, got to calling it the Hound a Day Inn because there were so many. No kidding. And they would bark all the time. They were and, and they were great dogs, but they were expensive. I mean, very yes. expensive. Every Saturday morning, what my, kind of dogs were they? They were hound dogs, oh. just hounds. Well, no, different, different kind type of hounds. Well, right, but I don't. Yeah, and and I, there's some I arguments about which one's going to be the best right. box dog. There is really good, and these dogs. Will sell for three hundred fifty to five hundred dollars yeah. for the pup as they get older. Five hundred, eight hundred thousand wow. dollars. They're, yeah, they're uh, not inexpensive. They're, they're dogs that have sold for forty nine thousand wow. dollars and ten thousand dollars. But they're not very friendly like family pets. Oh, yeah. they're they're just they're great. They're wonderful family pets, and and one of my favorite things to do with my grandfather, every Saturday morning, he would go dog trading. Every Saturday morning. And he would take me dog trading with him. And trade his dogs? He would trade, you know, this dog for that dog and or you'd buy another dog or Did you look in their mouth? Yes. Oh, he would you have look, to look in their in mouth. The mouth. Some and, if it's the darker the mouth, some good, but some like uh freckles in there. Yeah. White freckles in there, the white Why is that? I don't know. That's don't what know either. now the coon hunters, you know, they get this as an art form. Mm hmm And some only like certain type of dogs. Mm -hmm. Like for example, mm -hmm. They're plot hounds, they're black and tans, right. they're blue ticks, yes. uh, there's American English and a walker. 
What about a basset hound? Do they use that? No, for no, no, no. That's they just but too late. These, now, and too the, low to the ground. <laughs> most important thing is, and this is true in all coon hunting, is you go out and the dogs are they're there, and then you look at them and say, "Talk to me." And when you say "Talk to me," the dogs get all excited and they go running off through the woods. And it's your job to catch them, and you'll hear them howling mm -hmm. along on the trail, and they get they get a different tone when they get on the scent, and then when mm -hmm. they get one treed, they they get a different howl, and you'll hear them wow. howling. And so, and you will go out and find them. And that's when you'll shoot the raccoon, usually with a 22. Okay, that, that's what I was going to ask. Which yeah. size and caliber? Some of these dogs, they are so excited about finding this raccoon. They don't want to catch it though. They just mm -hmm. want to chase it because the raccoon will eat them up. It is a vicious yeah. animal. I don't care how cute they look. They are a very vicious animal when they're when they're cornered. They're going to run from you most time. Right. So, but some of these dogs get so excited, they'll actually climb the tree. Wow. They'll go up the tree. The problem with the dog climbing the tree is the dog has no reverse. Yes, yeah, true. <laughs> and these dogs will go up 30 and 40 yeah. feet in the tree and then just fall out. And then they like to get on the, the edge of the limb and they use the saw to cut it this yeah, way. They, yeah, that's know, right. Then, <laughs> at least you know, that's what I've seen on Can you imagine Jerry. if you have a $5,000 dog that's climbed 40 oh. feet in the tree and the only thing that's going to happen, it's going to fall. And land on its head and on its back. Wow. They're not like a cat. Yeah, that's true. And so you watch five thousand dollars falling from the tree. Uh, I had a guy tell me that him and this other guy got their coats off and they hung it out there. You know, they're going to catch it. They missed it by two foot. Ah. <laughs> so, oh. But uh, but now a lot there are a lot of arguments about the plots or is the mm -hmm. uh, it's a very uh, very unknown breed of a hound dog. It's the North Carolina uh, dog, matter right. of fact. And then the tans and the walkers, the blue ticks, and, and there are other type hounds that do that. And they track by scent. They are a scent dog. Okay, so when you, okay, let me get this straight though. So, so you, 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 you shoot the raccoon for the pelts, but nobody eats raccoon meat, or do No, they? that's not true. People do eat raccoon oh, do meat. They? Most of the hunters around here don't eat it because it's, if, if you've ever ate muskrat and uh, possum and groundhog, it's a lot like that type of meat, a little greasy. Muskrats what, are probably the least greasy. What about like cow? Is there anything like cow? No, cows are totally different. Okay, because that's yeah. all I've really had is yeah. cow. Yeah, but yeah, the, the muskrat. <laughs> Chicken. Is, the muskrat really is the uh, the best meat of those, of the possum or the groundhog really? or the raccoon. But people will buy the meat and eat it. You know, if you deep fat fry it, you can about eat anything. A little barbecue sauce and deep fat uh, fry it and you got it. Hey, that's the sauce. But uh, <laughs> yeah, sriracha, that's great. sriracha. You know, uh, and, and some and people don't don't kill the coons either. Some of them just like the chase and the hunt. Right. And there's some people who actually count. And uh, a lot of the guys, uh, almost all of them, uh, sell the meat and the uh, raccoon. Usually, they sell the whole raccoon basically for the pelt. For the pelt. Yeah. Well, now there's there's a church out as you go towards uh, McDonald's out mm -hmm. there. It's a nice church, Church of God Church. I can't think of the name of it, but every year they have a wild uh, meat. Uh, day Buffet, or whatever yeah. right and you go out there pay so much and you can eat bear uh -huh. and all kinds of wild stuff like mm -hmm. i guess raccoon and things like that and i haven't been there to do it yet but i know a lot of people that have uh -huh. and they said it's a great way to try things you would never ever probably try to eat mm -hmm. they go out and shoot it and cook it and it's just chicken to cook different yeah exactly what it we is. did it we did that at my house one year as a like a new year's day celebration my husband's family all came over and um we made rattlesnake um, it's good. Yeah, rattlesnake it's is very, very good. good. Really? It slides down really See, good. See, I could. <laughs> it just sort of I eases its way down. And my father-in-law asked me to make him squirrel and dumplings, and I did. Squirrel dumplings, yeah. Whoa. Now, you also, you uh, cook the brains, and you, you can take those to work with you and crack open the little skull there, and you have the brains there, and they're really good. Not me. Yeah, I'm not all about that. I'm not, not me. All about but, 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 Michelle, for you to just even cook it, see, I had a friend that goes hunting all the time, mm -hmm. and he, goose, he goes geese hunting and, and duck hunting, and he made some geese fillets, mm -hmm. and it looked like a, like a fillet. I mean, it was small around with bacon wrapped mm -hmm. around right. it, and so he, and he asked me, I said, I really don't. He said, I'll tell you what, take this home, let Kim try it. I said, well, she's not going to eat geese don't she tell her what it is it's what he said he said don't tell her just put it right before she walks in the door heat it in the microwave get it good and warm and when she comes in say just try this i want you to try this i said you know what i'm gonna do it i'm gonna trick her and see if that works so i took it i put it on a plate and i kept waiting for her to drive up when i saw her drive up i stuck it in the microwave i turned it on 
She's walking in. I thought I'm gonna have her try it in a minute. As soon as she walked in, she went, "What the heck is that smell? <laughs> that stinks!" I thought that's it. She ain't gonna try that. Let me give you a warning about this. That I would think Kim probably prepares more of the meals for you. She does. And if you trick her into something, your next meal may have something in it you don't. I think she has done that yeah, to okay. me before. And she has. Uh, now, raccoons will come up to your house uh, and they will eat your cat food. They will tear open mm -hmm. your garbage yes. can. Mm -hmm. They'll tell your. They'll tear a hole into the screen porch. They'll tear holes through, uh, into the wood to get underneath your house. Anywhere that might be a food source, do that. So the only you know, way to get rid of them, of course, you could shoot them or you can trap them. If you do trap them though, you have to take them seven to eight miles at least away from your home or, they'll come or they're going to come back, especially uh -huh. where the easy meals are. Mm -hmm. So if you can get 20 miles away, most likely, but raccoons will return all the way back to where you took them from. Where do they live like normally, like wild? Uh, in, in the, the woods, in the trees, yeah. They live up yeah. in a tree, yeah. in a hole in the tree? Or I just guess like they could. Or they got like a yeah. nest, I've and never... and they're very uh, they're a social animal that the uh, the uh, females will all get together and hang out, and then the guys all go out and get a beer. Yeah, you know, watch, but, watch uh, the ball games. Yeah. But you can see a lot of dodge them bullets. Uh, you, you, you can see a lot of them out there, you know, with that. Uh, of course, uh, if you want to get in great shape and you are really interested and you would like to take your child out and do this activity, there are coon hunters here that would love to take you with them. Uh, you plan to wear some good shoes, mm -hmm. dress warm, and plan to be gone for a while. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I went with my grandfather. Fox See, I think Honey, I would like to do that. And it was the it's one of the best memories of my life. Mm -hmm. Was sitting there eating beanie weenies out of the can, listening oh, yeah, to the dogs talking. run. See, I, I think I might would. Oh, and listen to the dog run. Some of these guys just love to hear the dogs run. Oh yeah, they argue about which one which one's dog is in the in the lead. Yeah. So, oh, so, so how would you know if it was your dog that got that? Well, it's just like you and shoot? I talking. They were eventually recognize their voice. They're out. You know, the coons will stand at, I mean, the, the dogs will stand at the bottom of the tree and howl at that coon until they can't bark, until they lose their voices. Really? That's, they are that excited about getting that dog. Like I say, but they don't want to catch it. You know, if well, the coon well, comes yeah, down the tree. Why would they have to bark that long? I mean, you, you follow the dog and, to the tree and then psh, right up well, in the tree. You, the dogs run a lot faster than you do. Well, that's true. And they may be over <laughs> yeah. the... They You're may in be, great shape, but they still yeah, run faster yeah, than yeah, you. Yeah, they <laughs> They're down through the holler and back up oh. up on the other side, and you've got to go find them. Wow. And uh, you've got to sort of just follow them in the night. We're going to have to get Joe on a hunt. I'd love to. I'd love to. It's neat. It really is We need to give him a raccoon steak. I'd love to. Yeah. Okay. I, would now, coon hunt. I would wear a coon skin cap if I was going to go coon yeah. hunting. Yeah, well, raccoon, uh, kind of like I say, the saying. raccoon, you're thinking, you got to let it get the grease out of it. It's a very greasy animal. Oh, okay. You know All right. Well, I appreciate you coming talking about this. Let's let's make a date yeah. to go coon <laughs> Yeah, okay. <laughs> but, you know, it's a southern tradition, and, you it know. Is. I've never been, so. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, like I say, it's getting harder and harder for people to find places to hunt now because of the uh, the uh, suburban sprawl and farmers right. don't, and the, peop the other hunters don't want you to scare the turkeys off, yeah, scare the deer off. There's a competition, and uh, coon hunting season September 1st or September 21st at uh, sunset this year. And it goes to February 28th, I believe. Oh, you can catch two a day, two a day per person. Okay, all right. Well, so see, you heard it here first. So we're going out coon hunting, all of us. There we're we all going to leave. No. Hey, Ron, thank you for coming again once oh. again and giving us uh, some. He's just a wealth of information, <laughs> and he's got so much good stuff. That's a good. That was a good one. I, mm -hmm. I'm very interested in this. We'll talk more. We'll go go Kuna. I do want to thank our guest. Of course, Amy Hicks was here today. We thank Amy for being with us. I want to thank Michelle Baker for sitting in for Kim today. Again, keep Kim and her mom in your thoughts and prayers. Mm -hmm. She will be back probably this weekend, and we'll, we'll let you know. We'll update you on, on uh, how her mom's doing. But in any case, thank you for joining us on Tennessee Valley this morning for this middle of the week Wednesday. We will see you next week. Have yourself a good one. And again, thanks for, uh, for watching. And don't forget, don't be late for work. You better get ready and leave. We'll see you guys. Have a good one.